Okay, hi there, I'm Carl at Escape Trailer, and today we have a very exciting video for you. Earlier this summer, we met with our customer, Johnny Hung. Johnny has completed what you might call the ultimate off-grid 21 classic. Now with that, Johnny purchased this trailer obviously from Escape, and then went and completed a number of aftermarket upgrades to improve his off-grid camping experience. I'm gonna give you a quick summary of this, and then we'll get into the video. So, he started off by modifying his tow vehicle. So his tow vehicle now enables him to have additional solar capacity as well as off-grid camping capability with additional water capacity. This is all inside his tow vehicle. Then he went and worked on his trailer itself and inside his trailer, or should we say on the top of his trailer, he started off by putting eight solar panels on the roof and that gave him ample solar capability to which he then installed a number of lithium battery cells, developed his own energy management system within the trailer. So that's gonna be very interesting for you to watch. After that, he's moved on to a number of modifications, too many for me to even remember, but one, not one that everybody will enjoy are the acrylic windows that he recently installed in the trailer. I think it really brings a nice, unique look to the Escape trailer and some beautiful features in these acrylic windows. He also installed a very voluminous new skylight in the trailer, so he replaced the vent that was in the trailer or the area where maybe the air conditioner would be and put a nice skylight. Now talking about air conditioners, he put a mini split system into his trailer. You're gonna be really interested to see what he did with that one. He also had some nice little features in the trailer that we'll touch on. One, he put his microwave on a slide out, which enables him to have access in behind the microwave. So he also has additional internal water storage inside his trailer. With that, he's put UV water sterilization feature. I don't know anybody else who's done this in their trailer. Some nice little comfort upgrade. He has a heated floor pad on the inside of the trailer. So after you've had a shower, you can step out and it's nice and warm. He took out the absorption refrigerator and replace it with a dual compressor DC refrigerator because Johnny also has a lot of energy within his trailer and you'll find out how much energy he actually has. He took out the gas cooktop that was in his trailer and put in an induction cooktop and then top it all off with some really nice feature on electrical distribution inside the trailer. He has a pop-up um, electrical outlet built into his kitchen countertop. So please like, subscribe, and comment with your favorite modifications that Johnny has made. Now we'll move to the video. Okay, hi everybody, it's Carl at Escape Trailer, and today I'm here with Johnny Hung, our good friend Johnny. And Johnny is back in BC again, and now we're gonna do a quick walk around the trailer. We've done lots of, we've done a video together. Yes, uh, yeah. A um, sort of long distance video at one point. And then, of course, you've been to the rally and everyone's seen all the photographs of your trailer on Facebook and, yes. and uh, around the place, which is quite wonderful. But we, we've never had the opportunity to actually just do a quick walk around right. and point out some of the key, the key features. Now, one of the things I want to do as we're going around is obviously talk about the key features in, in Johnny's trailer. And then, because everyone's going to ask, oh, Carl, when are you going to start doing this? <laughs> <laughs> right. So we do have, I mean, obviously we, we sort of take a look and look at the long-term um, sort of validation, right. should we say, from your experiences and then take that and kind of feed that into a solution that potentially can go into the escape trailer. And of course we have to put it into as much as possible, all the models and all the, all the layouts and floor plans that we have for the trailer, which makes it just a little bit more challenging for us because we also have to make it that we can put it through production at the same speed as everything else right, is everything right. else is going through. So there's a lot more, there's a lot. The R&D version is, and you come from an R&D sort that's of right. background, that's so right. the R&D version can usually be very expensive right. and, uh, <laughs> and not something you want to put into production. So the challenge for us from an escape perspective is productionizing right. the, um, the solution. So shall we, well, thanks again for coming back. Let's do a quick walk around and maybe we'll start with the vehicle. The vehicle. Yeah. Well, um, this is a, a 2017 Honda Ridgeline. Uh, it has a uh, 5,000 pound tow capability. And um, a lot of people are uh, not of the opinion that it's capable. But I can tell you that it's been, let's see, 2019. Yeah, it's been about three years yeah. that I've put maybe at least over 23,000 miles on it. Well, with this trip, it's, uh, gosh, I add another 1,500 miles just coming up here. Mm. 
um, it it has performed quite uh, uh, heroically climbing the mountains. Uh, although it's not the fastest horse in the barn, but it sure does the job. Uh, I'm not a fast uh, driver. Um, you know, I'm retired now. And yeah, I'm on vacation mode. Yeah, so no hurry. Not yeah, hurry I'm not in a hurry to get there. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm I don't push the the speed limit. And uh, we all know about the uh, the physics mm -hmm. about uh, momentum, speed, and mass. Mm -hmm. So I manage the gas pedal <laughs> right. to uh, slow that mass down so that it is controllable. And and I think the key is really having a tow vehicle. And, and I, I'm sure you convey this to your your uh, customer with the proper height, the right uh, brake controller, and uh, and I check the brake performance for every trip because we load it, you know, each individual yeah. load their trailer slightly differently. Uh, you might have a longer trip, uh, more uh, gear and, and other items that load the trailer down. So um, each and every trip that I take, I adjust the um, uh, brake controller so that I have optimum performance. Right, right, so, right. Yeah, besides that, uh, Oh, I did add a, a transmission cooler. Oh, okay. Yeah, for yeah. yeah to cool the transmission, and that has worked tr uh, perfectly. Yeah, uh, it, it uh, basically uh, kept the temperature down uh, on those long climbs to um, normal operating temperature below 180 Fahrenheit. The key here is you have a, you have a vehicle that's rated at 5,000 pounds, and of course the Escape uh, 21 Classic is GVWR is also 5,000 pounds. So when you're, running, when you're running that sort of close from a, shall we say, stated specification mm -hmm. perspective, right. and we know that the automotive uh, manufacturers are usually, they, they have to be a little more cautious. Or Very conservative. conservative especially in North their, America. Yeah, yeah. With, the, with their numbers, right? You'll also find, you know, sometimes in Europe, it's a, it, it'll say 5,500, well, it won't be, won't be pounds, but let's just say 5,500, whereas in America, it'll say, 5,000, but the, the, the key to it is managing it. Yes. So managing the load in your trailer, the balance of your trailer, and then the, and simply managing your speed. That's right. And your aggressiveness of your driving, shall we say, yeah. to um, say, you know, it'll pull it. You just gotta have a little bit of mechanical sympathy. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, I've traveled throughout Europe. Yeah. Uh, in the summertime, in August, where everybody's on vacation. And you see a lot of these, what they call caravans. Um, it would be hard pressed for you to find an American style pickup truck yeah. towing that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the European, um, they tow it with sedans and uh, SUVs. Yeah. SUVs. But what they do is uh, they change the design a little bit to move the axle a little bit forward mm -hmm. to keep the tongue weight down. However, um, their speed limit is, is not nowhere near right. what we have here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some stretch in Utah, they they go as fast as 90 miles an hour. Well, the, it, the I think the speed limit is 80 or 85 in some stretches of Utah, mm. and people push it up to 90. Yeah. Anyways, but in Europe, they uh, they keep the speed down and they're able to manage it, and that's that's how you know that so. continent handles towing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the old adage "speed kills" or the old slogan "speed kills" exactly. is. Uh, is so very true. So we manage it and then we go from there. So that's that's that. Now from a tow vehicle perspective, of course, you have a lot more bells and whistles from a yes. camping experience that's right. in your trailer. Because, you know, if we haven't talked about this already, Johnny is very, very big on being on self-sustainability and, uh, and using that through solar. So creating a, a solar capability and then also a water storage capability. That's right. So that you can be self-sustainable um, yeah, I would say typically in this, more so this type of weather yes. than the Northwest weather that we, <laughs> that we have, where it's mostly gray most of the time. But even then you're still getting some sun. Yes. You're just not yes. getting, not getting the, full, the full blast. So I know on this trailer, of course, you have your solar panels on the, on the rear. Um, I know you have a, a bladder on the inside. Yes, I do. Soda for additional fresh water. water. Exactly. I have uh, 30 gallons of um, water carrying capability. And the, what's unique about the Honda is that under the truck bed, there is a trunk. Mm. It's a well that people put 
uh, ice in it or other gears. However, I opted for that space to have a 30 gallon water tank with a sub compartment underneath holding that water. Yeah. And on top, I could still have storage. Yeah. And you can see that I have spigots here for uh, intaking water. And also I have an outlet for water. And you can't see it from here, but there's a switch for a uh, pressurized water system. So literally I can use this as a uh, alternate shore power uh, water supply. Right. Running a hose all the way oh, to my okay. high pressure right uh port yeah to provide pressure water in case in, in an emergency my uh, sure water pump, pump yeah. inside fails yeah i have a secondary you pressurized pump. water yes. coming from the back of your vehicle exactly. into your into your right yeah so probably a little bit beyond what most people will want to do but <laughs> certainly gives you a sense of the art of the possible if you really if you wanted to have this you know more um more, water capacity yeah well for i like to boondock a lot yeah and um, you don't want to drag your trailer from camp to town to fill up water. Yeah. So what you do is you drive your tow vehicle, yeah. get to a spigot with a hose, fill up your 30 gallon, That's come right. back to camp back. Yeah. and uh, dispense your water. And, and of course I have this uh, 350 watts uh, of solar here uh, that is connected to a charge controller inside. Mm -hmm. So... I'm just sorry, just, just for everyone's information here. When Johnny purchased this trailer, he purchased it without solar and without, no, sorry, without lithium battery. We didn't have them at that time anyway. Mm -hmm. So without solar, with the intent mm -hmm. of adding all this solar, all the solar capability um, into it. So that's good. So we have the vehicle and the vehicle's got extra power or extra solar capability and um, extra water storage to then feed your boondocking yeah. requirements or extended, we say, boondocking yeah. requirements. And these are removable. Yeah. These are removable or you can have them connected as, as one single unit. You can tilt it this way or this way. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can take these individual panels and walk it right, 50 so yards out. Style. Yeah, suitcase yeah. style. Yeah. I have an additional 30 feet on top of this 30 feet of wire to walk it out that way if I need to. But so, if you're so far, cover or yeah, so far I have not really needed it. Yeah, yeah, but the uh, capability is there. Right, and to be honest, I don't usually camp with this because what I have up on my trailer is plenty. Now, one of the really interesting features for for what you did on, on your trailer was this slide out ideas, which I, I loved and I remember talking about the idea, wouldn't it be great to be able to have slide outs so you can get more and more yes. capacity? on top of the trailer and I see that you've done it. So that's, that, that's quite wonderful. But the part that really, I'm really interested in now or for long and long term is your bonding strategy. Yes. To the, to the fire, to the gel coat or to the, right. to the top of the fiberglass. So could you give us a quick uh, rundown on what you did there? Okay. So uh, as you mentioned, um, I uh, went, when I purchased the trailer, and I, I, at the time in 2019, I explained to you, oh, I'm gonna put a heck of a lot of solar up there. All you have to do, if you don't mind, is to provide an entry gland for yes. me, which you guys did wonderfully. And uh, from that point on, there is zero holes drilled um, on the roof to mount the total of two, four, six, eight solar panels uh, on the roof. And uh, you are right. Uh, I uh, use a uh, double-sided adhesive. It's called, uh, it's made by 3M. It's called VHB tape. They are very strong. VHB stands for very high bond. Oh, there you so, go. Okay, you did some <laughs> research on it. Yeah, I've, I've used it years ago in some other, um, uh, some other projects I was working on, in the VHB tape. It's great because it gives a nice continual, continuous structural bond, or yes. ni nice continual bond should we say, which is, which is generally better than a, than a riveted bond or, or something. So besides of, besides of um, bulk haul trailers and stuff or panel trailers will have VHB, they'll use, they'll use a, a bonding agent. So they get a much better sort of composite structure rather yes. than a, you know, a riveted style uh, structure on there. So that's great because, and, and I'm, it's, everything's still there. So that's, that's yeah, wonderful. 
than quite a while. You got, you got a fair amount of mass on there as well, too. Absolutely. And, and um, I think you have four, is it four? Do I see four brackets either side? Uh, so there's two, oh yeah. You can see that there is some structural. Now, yeah. of course, you know, the first time I did it, I over-engineered it. Um, I really don't need four um, struts holding right. the slides. Right. You really need two. In terms of the mounting, we can't see from yeah. here, but in terms of the mounting, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, 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 what length of VHB do you have on the mounting? So the, um, for the front slides, by the way, these are rated for 300 pounds right. uh, each set. They, uh, the fire trucks use those. They have these okay. large drawers yeah. that they slide out and they put their uh, heavy pneumatic or cutting instruments yeah. uh, in, in these trades. Um, they're very strong. So uh, what I did was I used what was available at Home Depot. These are um, very, I think, two by two angle aluminums. Mm. And I used the um, one of the surface area to put the adhesive down. And of course, the roof is not perfectly right. flat. So yeah, I had to curve, yeah. look at uh, um, different locations and also segment the uh, t attachment on the roof so that I get um, the, the bond that I want. So you can see like the first spar there, yeah. there is an angle to it yeah. to accommodate um, just finding that nice, flat, even right. surface. Okay. Because what makes a good bond is really surface prep and, and the surface area. For sure. So um, how much surface area do you think you have uh, bonded between the bottom of that bracket? So, so oh what's the, gosh. what do you reckon? Is it like this, this? Um, it, it's, well, I guess we can uh, go up there and check it yeah. out. Yeah. I don't know the numbers. However, I definitely overkilled it because uh, the VHB the shear force, I think it's like 88 pounds per square inch. Mm. I have quite a bit of length of uh, yeah. angle yeah. aluminum there. And I think, and I think there. that's the trick. I think the trick yeah. is getting plenty of surface area with that VHB, because that VHB is incredibly strong. It is. Um, when it's applied properly with the right pressure and right. the right preparation, very, very important. Yeah, I've worked with it uh, during the time when I uh, was in uh, research and development. Yeah. Yeah. And when we did some uh, validation on it, we pretty much had to um, destroy these um, heating element that we adhere to the aluminum. We, we had to peel off the, um, the heater and basically half of the heater stayed behind. Yeah, I've used, I've used that tape on some um, military shelters that I was doing in my past yes. life that okay. we built with the past life. And it was all VHB, I used VHB bond because it was a, a nice composite, if you like, you made a nice composite sort of structure out of it. And then we would put it through all the off-road testing that they wanted for, for mm -hmm. the military applications. And it just holds beautifully when it's applied properly. And we can get it in different thicknesses, which allows you for some compliance mm -hmm. on, on gaps or, or irregularities in the, in the, um, the surfaces or different angles and things in the surface. So, so that's a very interesting one. So you got to, obviously we have a bunch of solar panels mounted to the roof with VHB. Um, the tape. I'm not going away from the mechanical yes. fixtures that Escape is using today, but certainly something for us to consider for the future as we as we move forward. Yeah. Now, the other, another thing that people are going to be really interested in, and we'll we'll work through the rest of the, the electrical system when we sure. when we jump inside, because that's where most of it is. But of course, I know it's a bunch of people when they look at the back of this truck, they went. Hang on a second. Where is the propane? He's got a split system in. <laughs> yeah, and where and where's the propane gone? Of course, being uh, electrical, mm -hmm. the, the the strategy is well, I don't want any propane. I'll rightly run everything off electricity, and then that affords the ability to pop the uh, the big tanks off because I know you have a bit of a surprise. Pop the large tanks off, and then throw on a split system AC, which, from a configuration perspective, works nicely in the 21 Classic because of the ability to locate yes. on, the, on the inside. So maybe talk us through a little bit about what this is. and So this is, uh, as you mentioned, a mini split. It's a 9000 uh, BTU mini split. It is a heat pump. Uh, it's a inverter type compressor. Uh, what that means, it's, uh, it can run variable speed. Yeah. Very efficient. Yeah. 
Uh, it's not like your normal rooftop AC where when the compressor's on, it's on 100%. Yes, yes. And when it's off, it's 100% off. This, you can run it at, uh, and it's got computer smarts in it to basically be as uh, efficient as uh, possible. This is very, this is prevalent in uh, Southeast Asia uh, yeah. because the homes are built as such that there is no centralized air conditioning, there's no ducting. So they like to, um, and if you look at some high rises, there'll be oh, these, uh, yes, uh, all, all along the yes. walls, yes. 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 Yeah. Um, so this was very inexpensive uh, compared to say a RV unit. This was uh, off season, it was $648. Beautiful. Um, and they are pre-charged and you could definitely do it yourself. Um, mm -hmm. If you get like an $80 to $100 uh, vacuum pump that you, you can buy at uh, Amazon, you could uh, run your line, evacuate your line, mm -hmm and uh, commission this in less than a day, a few hours. I, I remember installing this in less than a day. You could see where the uh, line set runs underneath the storage yeah. and just underneath the bed um, on one side of the black tank. And then through behind the bathroom, behind the mirror, and then come through into the uh, cabin area. Yeah, you see the head unit inside. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, so that's good. So then you've got heating and cooling. Heating and, and cooling. And it's whisper quiet. It is yeah. absolutely whisper, and it's we can beautiful. definitely run a test on that. Let's keep going around the outside yes. of this. What everyone's gonna be interested in, of course, is the acrylic window upgrade that I know you've done recently. Yes. All right, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with this. Um, to the point of, we just did a Q&A session yesterday, and one of the topics on there was alternate windows, either acrylic or polycarbonate. And uh, I'd said, okay, yes, we're going to have a, we're gonna kick off a development project, have a look at this, uh, see what the art, the possible, the art of the sizing and stuff is for us to be able to uh, maybe look at this as a future option for people. But please tell us about your Arctic Terran windows. I uh, always wanted performance and uh, the idea of acrylic window jumped in my mind in that when I did some research I found that the uh, acrylic material is three times less thermally conductive than glass and also I think half the weight or 60 60 percent of the weight um, when I did some research on it I needed to find a window that would fit as close to the existing hole that was cut already for my uh, frameless window. And these, um, this particular size, this is a nine, I believe, um, 650 by 950 millimeter window. Uh, it fit perfectly in that. I only had to cut a hole a little bit larger uh, to accommodate this. And uh, each of these window took maybe a couple hours to install. Mm. Now, most people don't have the <laughs> risk-taking, oh, <yes. laughs> I was gonna say guts, <laughs> to, to go at their fiberglass trailer with a, a cutting tool of some sort. I know you had to <laughs> nibble out some areas here to, yes. make this, to make this fit. So if you're looking at it thinking, hey, honey, go and uh, go put some acrylic <laughs> windows in the trailer, it might be a bit more work than uh, <laughs> somebody really wants to get into. Well, definitely there was a leap of faith yeah. and, uh, and I, I was joking with uh, some friends and my wife. I said, well, if I uh, make a mistake, uh, there'll be a uh, E21 <laughs> for sale, but cheap, comes with duct tape. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that I would then get on a list on, uh, right on, on a 23. One. Well, you did a great job. It looks like it's, and I know you've, we, 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 we popped the ring off and we had a quick look at the installation. And from That's an installation right. perspective, it's, uh, it's as easy as the other windows are, should we say, to... It, it is. It's not that hard. It is a sandwich a type of uh, installation. You do have to beef up the, um, the frame. So yeah. there is a uh, four pieces of one by twos, which makes this window, you know, pretty stiff yeah. area. Yeah. So if you feel that. Yeah. That is... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, it's a lot stronger than, say, the, the original mm. installation because... Yeah, and these are nice because they also come with the in with your integrated uh, blind system. Yes, yeah, right? we can so show you that. We'll, we'll look at that when we go in the inside, but integrated right. blind system, so it can go up or down, which is uh, really nice. So a nice retrofit option yes. on here yes. for folks, and if people want more information, of course, I would say go to your all your Facebook posts yes. on uh, on how you did on how you did this work. But it's a beautiful. I I think they really actually complete the look of the uh, of a trailer very nicely. I think so so yeah. it's something I'm very interested in in moving forwards with. I know the engineering boys are actually <laughs> are both going to come out and have a have okay. a peekaboo here to try and to try and at least advance our development just that little bit more. Yeah. Uh, was it three? Was it three locations they can? They four. Was, four. Four. Excellent. Yeah. So I have the the emergency window that's replaced. Yeah. And then these two here on this side, and then of course the front. Yeah. Uh, the front is where I had the original uh, rock guard single that's pane right. window. Yeah. Uh, that was my you know initial investigation is to improve on that installation yes. of, of the window because it was a single pane. Yes. And of course, being being acrylic, you're not concerned about it shattering and, no, and no. stuff. So it's a, so it's a nice. It's much stronger nice, than nice glass, idea. surprisingly. Yes, yeah, and for sure. And it just flex. Yes. And I uh, install a uh, a solar film on here mm. too for yeah, privacy, I can see that. and also to cut back on the sun because these are because they're so large and yeah. so clear. Yeah. It's really bright you get inside. Get a lot of solar gain. So. The tint takes about 30% of the light. There's three opening position here. Yeah. And this is the maximum. And definitely, you know, there's a quite easy to interact with your other camper. And book screen wise? Yeah. Yeah, one of these is the book screen. That's right. There you go. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The book screen. Yes, there you go. Right. Yeah. So book screen and privacy. Yes. Uh, and privacy blind. Yeah. That's privacy. what I was trying to remember on. That's right. And you so, can, you know. Yes. together. You can have half and half. Yeah. Or full. It's a nice reflective uh, surface. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Total privacy, by the Total. way. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous. So, yeah. so I think uh, a very interesting option here for the future. So that's that one. What do we else we have around the back? This side. And we're back to our nice acrylic window. And then you can see the, the strength and structure in place on the solar panel installation yeah. on the rear. By the way, I uh, wanted to show you, Carl. What do you expect to see back here? So these are uh, recycle uh, packing material that came with my refrigerator, my new refrigerator. So, right. so. Uh, we purpose some of the material to provide some insulation here. So you started off with the Dometic. Three-way. Dometic three-way. Yes. And then it uh, and, and decided, nope. I would rather have a That's compressor right. fridge. Well, and, it was tough because yeah. at the time, the fridge, uh, the circuit board uh, was defective. Oh, And right. it was cover under warranty. However, during the pandemic, they, they could not supply uh, any of the parts to me. Yes. And they yes. told me that it would take six months for a back order. And you have to have it um, uh, be... Uh, repair at a at shop, a dealer, yes. at a dealer, and the dealer was quoting four to six months wow. backlog of work, so. Yeah. I so you made the brain choice and said, nope, yeah. I, now uh, it's made, my choice is made. Choice is made, yes. rip the door out, remove the old. And we'll and have a quick, we'll go inside and we'll have a quick look yeah. at some of the, because it wasn't quite the right size, so a little bit of finishing work you have to do Absolutely. around here, which you did yes. a very nice job on, of course. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for inviting us into your trailer. Yes, welcome. So where do we start? Well, oh yes, the, the we've got to start with this guy. Should we? You want to turn him on? Yeah, I sure can. Um, you know, since it's a little cool over here, maybe I should turn up some heat. <laughs> so um, this mini split is made by Sinville, um, and um, again, as I mentioned, this is a heat pump. So the compressor outside now is running backwards. Mm -hmm. um, in the heat mode to now uh, spit out cold air outside mm -hmm. and actually compress the coil and then um, basically flow the air through the coil element to deliver the heat. Mm -hmm. 
and it takes a couple minutes for for that uh, compressor to uh, get into its operating mode. I opted to locate it in the front so it's not in the way of I like to keep this area open so if I had installed this here mm -hmm. it would have been yeah, a bit of a head too intrusive and yeah. also locating the compressor in the back would subject the compressor to a little bit more g-force because mm -hmm. of the uh, mm -hmm. the way the moment arm yeah the, the moment arm. The length that you have, um yeah. so because i keep it on uh, when i'm traveling through the desert yes yeah uh, i like to keep my cabin at around um, 70 degrees uh, fahrenheit mm. so so that is always on and so is my inverter my inverter's on 24 7 to keep the refrigerator running and keep the air conditioner working so that uh, there's always an, a very nice environment here. I don't know if it's my imagination. Do you feel the heat? I can feel it, yes. Ah, I, do, I can feel it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there you go. It's on and it's running. I, I, the only way I knew is I could feel some warmth coming across my face. So that's wonderful. That's all on that side. And as you can see some of the piping, the way it runs through in behind the, um, behind the bathroom. That's right. And I'm going to hide yeah. that with some uh, leftover fabric material. Right. Oh, make very a little nice. turtleneck sleeve yeah when i have a chance yeah when yeah. you get back to base um work our way back you have installed your microwave on yes. a slide right so uh instead of the permanent mount where mm -hmm. you cannot access the back this is a very deep cabinet so what i did was i purchased some slide and and made some modification cut the uh the front guard off and uh, made it a slide to access right. storage, in storage back yep. here and then storage back there. Mm -hmm. um, I keep some paper towel back there and then also additional storage for cleaning items, gloves, whatever else. And to stow, all I need to do is set the pin in and now it keeps it from sliding out. Place. Beautiful. Yeah. And if you notice, there's these uh, stainless steel vent grill here. Now, if you can feel it, there's there's an air movement here. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Well, that is because I'm removing heat from the back of the refrigerator into this compartment and then out through the vent oh, here. Um, when the refrigerator is working, it produces the same amount of heat as one person. It's mm -hmm. about 100 watt. The dual compressor mm -hmm. so it's just like having an extra camper so you opted for isotherm that's right a very that's nice right. looking a very nice looking unit with obviously fridge and freezer compartments yeah. in it and then you finish it off with some you found some nice maple yes maple uh, uh, these are iron on maple strips mm -hmm. so yes the original dometic i think it was a 6.2 cubic mm -hmm. feet uh, freeway yeah. yeah yeah it had a freezer on top and a refrigerator on the bottom i believe yeah mm -hmm. And um, as I mentioned, it, it uh, did not survive um, the pandemic. Yeah. So this was uh, in replacement for it. Um, like you said, uh, it, it is not the exact size. So there is some uh, trim work mm -hmm. that I had to do. Uh, I used poplar, which is a hardwood, to fill in the, uh, the gap because this is a uh, flush mount installation here. And uh, it's actually a dual compressor. Here's the size of the fridge. It's, it's 6.9 cubic feet, uh, I think 4.7. And then uh, the remaining volume is, is for the freezer. Mm, wonderful. It's, uh, it's very quiet. And you're happy with it, obviously? I am very happy with it. It's been a year and a half now, mm -hmm. I believe. And it's on 24 seven because I'm right. you know, ready to go. Um, here's the freezer. The important necessaries. The, the, yeah, the ice cream. The ice cream. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, you know, if you're just not a liveaboard, if you just want to keep some frozen item there, you could separately leave on the uh, oh, you can run the, the freezer run the custom, and then right. leave this empty and turn it off. Yes. So yes, yes. the beauty of dual compressor is that you can always maintain a supply of frozen items mm -hmm. and then just empty out the normal fridge. Because for those who, who don't know, typically what happens is is the the the, the freezer area they then feed the they feed the cool air from the freezer area into the fridge, into the fridge area. That's right. It's, it's, it's called typically, typically what happens. Waterfall style, they call yeah. it. Uh, whereas this is obviously direct driven, both sides. Here you have you removed the obviously the Dometic 
right. um, Pelican. air conditioner. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that, that was in place. And install this yourself. Yeah, this is a uh, 550 by 550 uh, skylight. So it's mm. a little larger hole than the original uh, uh, air conditioner unit. Um, yeah, I uh, opted to remove that totally because it was quite noisy. Yeah. Um, it, to me, it, it's just not uh, pleasant, the, the noise that it creates. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so took it out, put a skylight in. Out, of course, you don't need it in. because you have your mini. Yeah, your this, mini. Is, this, this is this is great. It's a nice double pane. Unit. Yeah. Yeah, and it has uh, again the um, sunshade and the bug screen. So this is the bug screen. And here's There's the sunshine. total sunshine, and it's got the light too. It's kind of bright. Okay. Here we go. Wow. You get a tan off of that. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It, it adds so much more light into the cabin. Mm. Um, you just feel a little bit more uh, open. So that was that. And then Dan, obviously, you put an induction yes. cooked up in place. And uh, I would credit you for this upgrade because uh, during our uh, tech talk, mm. you asked, why don't you put an induction cooktop yeah. on there? Yeah, and you've I got said, so much power, this thing. And it's a somewhat ulterior motive because I have, you know, I, I am very interested in the idea of a fully electric trailer, you know, yes. only because I see the advances that we're making in, yes. in, in battery technology Absolutely. and charging technology. I, I do think the way of the future is full electric RVs as, the, as opposed to propane. Yes. Um, I think. Uh, so we'll see. For some well, folks, I'm there. more so. You're already there, so there, you're an early and adopter. And I can tell you it is wonderful yeah. um, to have that capability. So I was boondocking up at Cow Cheek, and there were a few campers you know, at mm -hmm. distance, but I definitely heard them because they ran the generator um, pretty oh, much yeah. uh, all day and night because uh, they needed power. So it was nice to... Um, camp without having you know dependency on uh, a gas generator yeah. for me so yeah now this is so much of this comes from having adequate energy storage as well but we'll finish off here so we have the induction cooktop and then of course you put in a pop-up power center yes in place uh, sort of from on the night router from the 120 from the 120 volt that's sort of in place coming yes. through here and then routed that back yeah. and cut a hole and and dropped in there uh, a little power center which is which is very nice now working our way back then we're gonna we should maybe try and pop the hood yes on this will. now what johnny did here was um built his own battery system so bought what are the cells that typically make up a what you might call a packaged battery and then designed or built up should we say coded up in his own battery management system for the cell so the form factor here is very unique Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you know, I'm very, very cool <laughs> at the yep. same time. So, if we have a peek, okay, voila, we have removed the um, the cushions, the table, and now we can get a look underneath the hood here, and see what we've got. As you can see, electrical systems and power or energy storage takes up a fair bit of space in your dinette. But if that's what you um, if that's what you're looking for, then this is certainly the way to go. So maybe talk us through this one here, Johnny. Yeah. So. Under the hood, um, you mentioned about the batteries here. So um, again, you mentioned that I built these batteries. Yeah, I bought these individual cells. These are about six inches by one inches thick and 10 inches tall. So I'm taking advantage uh, of the vertical axis here. Um, as you know, some of the basic form factors are the group 27, mm. for, uh, uh, form yep. factor for lithium batteries. Yep. Um, those tend to take up space. Um, so what you see here, there are 32 individual 3.2 volts lithium cells, which I connect or connect into um, parallel and series. So these one, two, three, four cells are in parallel. So there are then eight of these four cells in series to make up the uh, 24 volt 
um, voltage that I use right. to supply the inverter here. So this is a 24 volt, 3000 watt inverter, which supplies all of the AC power to the cabin, um, the mini split, the induction cooktop, um, microwave, yeah. even the water heater. You can tell that here's the end right here and this is the length. It's not that much bigger than say two um, six volts lead acid uh, as far as the footprint. However, this is equivalent to 16 golf sized battery. It's, it's pretty incredible, the energy density of uh, lithium battery. With numbers, um, this is equivalent to 10.2 kilowatt hour battery bank or eight 100 amp battle born batteries or 16 six volts Trojan T105. Or for the layman, an awful lot of energy storage. There's a lot of energy, <laughs> but I don't have the thousand pounds of, exactly. of exactly. Uh, lead acid. And that's the challenge. So, you know, when, a, when someone's packaging up a lithium battery into a Group 27 you yes. know, the style or, or, or bigger um, configuration, they're doing it to create a package that they can sell aftermarket that's or right. sort of fit into it's existing like space in. claims mm -hmm. that, that people have already got on either trailers, golf carts or other applications. So this is somewhat novel, um, a sort of a unique way of doing it. It's kind of definitely going back to first principles in terms of saying, here's, you know, I want to take the, take this, this, the, the, the lowest level component mm -hmm. that has what I need and then build it up into a package that I want. Right. Right. And that's, that's, that's you've done a very nice job of putting that together here. Of course, you know, batteries are only batteries. They only store the, they really store the energy. Um, you know, they're all fed from the solar panels that we have outside typically on the roof and then in order to get that energy and control the energy that goes into the batteries you need to have your charge controllers that's right so these are talk about the charge controller i have three charge controller this is the main one that handles the uh the four household size solar battery that's in the f oriented in the front and the back uh, including the one that slides and this middle one here handles the uh, midsection uh, panels, mm -hmm. the four uh, midsection panels. And then this takes the power from my truck solar and also my DC to DC converter uh, from the car. So together we have uh, 2120, which is 2,120 watts that, uh, that's rated to be um, to come through here. Um, now, this battery bank does not have what we call a commercial battery management system. I designed my own battery management system. Uh, you can see this relay here. This is a 250 amp relay. There's a control signal wire here that comes from my Victron um, 720 battery manager. In it, there are algorithm that you can select. So I can use the algorithm uh, as smart to turn off in case there's a catastrophic uh, failure related to temperature or over voltage or under voltage. So with the Victron equipment, you can utilize those smarts to control a relay like this, uh, or in some cases, that signal can go to an external uh, generator uh -huh. to start a generate to, to replenish power. Uh -huh. So those are the features. That's that part. And then, of course, to get the energy from the batteries into the trailer. That's right. To all the features in the trailer, you have your... Yes, this is a 3000 watt inverter, which a lot of people would think it's overkill. But for what I'm doing, I'm, you know, this entire month and a half. Uh, exclusively on electric Yes. Um, when I'm boondocking. So this powers the induction cooktop, the microwave, the toaster oven, which is right behind you, and, and the mini split, and even the um, water heater. Mm -hmm. and, and the beauty of some of the Victron equipment is that there are um, 
features in there that you can program to uh, affect different functions. Like right now, this controller, there is a um, load output that has a algorithm that says, if I'm above 27.1 volts, which means there's a lot of sun, I will turn on this relay here, which I designed in here. This is a uh, relay in line with the circuit breaker for the water heater. So the circuit breaker in here is always on. This relay comes on when I have excess amount of solar, That's right. yep. which is what I programmed in. Right. Right. And it will then turn on the water heater uh, during the day when there's plenty of sun and then it'll just keep the water warm until I'm ready to use it. And it will turn off if it drops below a certain voltage. Right. So it's self-regulating. Yeah. Yeah. And I can manually override it if I need hot water at night. Right. You right. know, and yeah. it's not or very hot on. water. A very hot water, yeah. turn yeah, it on. Sure. Otherwise you can keep it at a hot enough sort of temperature and work your, and work your way through. Of course, you have your uh, progressive uh, industry power conditioner, which is like an anti-surge and also a fault detection. I also wanted to kind of convey that, do you guys have a transfer switch? Yeah, in, we have. In your system? Yeah, but not inside the inverter, no, it's a separate. Yeah, so yeah. I don't have a transfer switch. This inverter, when it senses shore power, it passes all of the, uh, passes muster with the progressive industry. Mm it will automatically pass through the AC um, to the, uh, the cabin. So there are no manual switching or anything like that. Yeah. It's seamless. So if you see yeah. power, this will be um, able to switch over and also charge the battery if I want mm -hmm. to. So I know that's something we're investigating. Obviously, we've moved now to, to Victron, to the MPPT controllers. Perfect. Uh, our controller. Is, is what we need. So we've moved to the MPPT controller with the, and then we, what we're doing is we've, we've put a, a, a smart shunt yes. in to then drive the, um, to drive the controller from the smart shunt. Then the, and that's key because with lithium, especially with lithium batteries, their, um, you know, their voltage can run, uh, can, can maintain quite high. And then only when they're absolutely out, do you suddenly see a drop. A That's drop right. off from, from on them. So, so we we think the from a user perspective, the key if you're just looking at one output, really what you're interested in is how long do I have left based on my current consumption. Typically, is what you're after at, at a very minimum level. And then um, then when you want to geek out, you can you know you can flick through or you can connect Bluetooth to the yeah. to the controller itself, and you can get as many stats as you want. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I could show you that too. But yeah. right now, so if you look at here, this is my current solar intake. It's 1,150 watts mm -hmm. that's being collected by my solar panel and uh, being charged to the battery uh, along with all the usual consumption. So I'm consuming electricity, but I have so much excess that's right. that it is pumping in here. Yeah. And you mentioned... Yeah. Um, the Victron uh, smart shunt. This is what this is. Yeah. It's, uh, you mentioned that you know exactly how much power you have, and that's the beauty uh, versus the previous mm -hmm. um, offering. I think they just measure the voltage, that's right. give you a very rough estimate of what power you have. But yeah. here, yeah. this is a true gas gauge. It's a it difference. counts current. Exactly. It's a difference between um, saying having the um, uh, the, the rev meter in your car yes. and saying, oh, I'm running at 4,000, but not knowing what speed you're going. Exactly. <laughs> and now we've essentially put a speedo in, so you yes. know exactly what speed, <laughs> what speed you're going. That's right. And, and, and the beauty is you know exactly, you know, uh, because you're a power manager now, you yeah. know exactly how much you're consuming That's or you right. consume for the day. Yes. And with Victron is that there's a history of your performance That's and it. consumption. Yeah. And so you can measure yourself and the old adage, what gets measured gets done, approach works. So once yes. you know where you are and you can measure yourself, then you can meter your power usage and everybody can do it. It's not something we have to do in a daily life in our houses, 
but you can quickly come to grasp that, oh, this uses energy. Oh, how much does this use? Oh man, if I leave it open for too long, it cools down and you know, it's, mm -hmm. going to, it's going to draw more. So you become, you know, if you're boondocking mm -hmm. or purely off energy, you become pretty adept. And of course, all the sailors know this yes. already, right? So we have a lot of sailors who are customers at Escape and they kind of already understand the, you got to manage everything inside. You know, the beauty of an RV is you can, it's so much easier to, yes. should we say, run out and top up. Whereas you're out in the boat in the middle of the ocean, right. it becomes a much greater challenge. That's a you. good point because yeah. sailors, you know, we need to uh, be independent. Yeah. There is no... Uh, there's no help coming. There's no help coming. You're in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> so you have to manage your system. Yeah. You got to know your, yeah, your stuff. Very much so. so. Now, what else do we have over oh, here? Obviously, yes. this is something new that people don't... Uh, yeah, so this is a uh, extra auxiliary 20-gallon tank. Um, this is the tank I use exclusively for when I winter camp. I don't fill water in the uh, stock tank in the bottom. Even though it's insulated, this... It gives me peace of mind about having a, a good water source when it's uh, below freezing outside. And the, the reason I can do this is because I have these fans here. You can see that this actually uh, is an intake fan. It circulates the cabin air through my battery, through my inverter, around, and warms up this whole tank area. And then here's the exhaust. So. Under the bench, this dinette, uh, the air is circulated um, and it's conditioned to the cabin ambient mm -hmm. air. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any freezing problem or I don't have any overheating problem. As you can see, this inverter is installed in a very tight location. And when you are heating up the water or running the microwave, making coffee in the heat of the desert, this can get warm. But if I have a nice air conditioned cabin and then the air can come through here and cool it, I'm that much ahead as far as uh, heat management. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so I have um, a series of uh, valves here. Um, and I don't know if you can see in there, but I have a UV uh, water sterilizer that's underneath and on the side. It provides uh, sterilization of uh, incoming water or um, periodic sterilization of the water that's inside my tank. Uh, as you know, um, these translucent tank exposed to light, there's potential for growth of algae and any pathogen that comes through the vent because the vent is exposed to the air. When you're driving on the freeway, some particulate it will get into the vent area and into your water and can contaminate. And that's why you'll get green water, you get slimy water. Mm -hmm. So what I do with the sterilization system is that periodically I could circulate the water right now by manipulating these valves here to go through my UV lamp to sterilize the water, to condition the water. Mm -hmm. So for those that traveled uh, into Mexico, yes. I think this will be a very good feature to have. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about the water source uh, because uh, without changing the composition of your water like chlorine does you can effectively uh, neutralize and inactivate right. any pathogens that potentially are water yeah. waterborne yeah. so that's what I do and and the beauty of these valve is I could transfer water from one tank to the other or sterilize one tank or the other and again, this is part of my water system that's connected to my truck, potentially, so. A very nice pathogen removable sort yes. of system within your fresh water system. So yes. um, for anybody who is concerned about water quality and wants to be absolutely right, yeah. if you like. You know, Safe, just, yeah. yeah. Or, or say you have some sort of condition where, you know, I need this water to be um, the best it can be then you know, a UV sterilization system uh, such as something like this would be of value to you. And we don't have one of those yet. <laughs> <laughs> but so this is unique to Johnny. And so if you want to find out what he's done, certainly go back to his Facebook page and, um, and get some of that information. Yeah. So maybe you could implement it yourself. Right. Sort of going forwards. So that's that. Now I know we're standing on something it's not warm at the moment. No, I didn't. I turned it off so that I don't cook uh, Harrison. So you have a, a, this, this, this I love. 
uh, cause it is a, such a simple install. So you have a, a thin, shall we say? Thin film, thin film heating, heating element, heating element. which is, uh, I, I believe is less than one millimeter thick. Um, it's laid on top of the current vinyl floor and then tacked on with uh, carpet tape. Then I lay a carpet runner over it and it is wonderful in the winter time. And in fact, this whole yeah. trip, I, it's just, I just, just, just it enough off. to, you know, to oh, keep, take keep your, the, the cold, keep, that's right. you know, chill up off. Through your, through your feet. Yes. So this is a beautiful addition, especially with people with cold feet. Yes, especially with people with cold feet and, you know, after a shower, you, you like to kind of step into yeah. something yeah. that's, something that's warm. nicer or warmer. Yeah. So that's a nice, uh, nice little addition. And uh, 12 volt? No, volt it isn't. It's, it's uh, AC. AC. Yeah. Now, of course, you've got the extra power, so it's just I, I, wires. Right. It's, yeah. it's hooked up to an extra relay over here. Mm -hmm. um, down here, it called, what is it? Floor heat. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Floor heat. That's right. And then that's my UV lamp supply. Um, the AC is permanently off because I don't have an AC up on the roof. Um, and uh, everything else is on except for the fridge. Fridge is running on DC. Wonderful. So that's, um, you know, one thing we didn't do on the inside is show them the bug screen. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, privacy. Privacy screen from the inside. We showed it from the outside. Yeah. But give you a sense of what this looks like from the inside. It's so clean. So the beauty of this is, is uh, you know, when you can have you know, very good airflow here. And um, at the same time, you know, you can isolate the exterior of bugs and other debris by this bug screen here. And uh, at night, you can just slide this yeah. yeah up for total privacy mm -hmm. and um that's the beauty that's beautiful i know lots of people will be in, are interested in the privacy side you know the ability yeah. just to close or like i just don't want light in the trailer in the morning because we're temporarily camping in the summer and it's bright all the time at 4 a.m or something it's super, or if you're up in alaska like angie and Rhonda, oh yes and you've got those extended long uh, days of of light as well yeah so, it's been wonderful johnny yeah, I really appreciate you coming back to us. Sure, and uh, and and doing this walk through with us. It's something we've been meaning to do for a little bit of a while. I'm almost glad it's taken as long as it's taken because we get to see more features, and I'm 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 interested in what you think you're going to do next. I love boondocking. Yeah, and wastewater management mm. is is a huge thing, especially in a gray tank. We don't have a a large gray capacity, so I'm thinking of a gray water reclamation. There are systems out there right now that I'm ex kind of exploring. Um, they have these uh, koi pond filters uh, with different uh, medias, and they can really do a good job of filtering out like your shower water. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe have a dedicated separate water system, the uh, reclamation system, where you can just utilize that um, you know, 10, 15 gallons of water repeatedly, mm. just like the astronauts. Mm, yes. Um, yes. So that yeah. way is, of course, I'm not an impact to the environment. And at the same time, I'm not stuck with having to pull up camp and go dispose as much because the black tank uh, on this 21, it, it's, it's quite large. That'll last a long time. Yeah. Um, but it's the gray water. Yes. And uh, yes. I like to feel clean. I shower every day. And you know, having a system that um, promote and allow me to have those comforts, I think that's something I'm going to look into. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Now I'll be really interested to see what other uh, other little things you think about sort of over the time. And really, yeah, now this is like escape, the escape astronaut program. Is <laughs> <laughs> where yeah. we're going next. Well, Johnny, listen, okay. I really, really appreciate you you coming through. Um, you know, we'll get ourselves set up for the next time. Well, so it's been my pleasure and thank you for uh, featuring all of my craziness. Yeah, um, no, it's wonderful. I'm really excited about it. So it's uh, very exciting. It's an opportunity for me to geek out, you know, yeah. you understand this yeah. stuff. Harrison yeah. And we all enjoy it stuff. like tremendously. So yeah. for all the geeks out there, <laughs> hope, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, we're Escape Trailer. We're built for you.